G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Today we're in beautiful Sarsfield in East Gippsland with John Kinneborough. Now John recently went through the fires, through the big fires that affected most of East, East Gippsland um, and he's slowly rebuilding and replacing his fences. So let's now have a chat to John about what he's trying to achieve with his new fences that he's rebuilding after the fires. John, how are you mate? Yeah, good, Tim. Yeah, very good. Yeah, That's beautiful good, good day in Sarsfield, yep. It is. Now, you've got a beautiful property here. Yeah, beautiful property, yep. Looks are a bit beguiling. About a year ago, you were burnt out in the fires. Yeah, yeah, we were a total loss back then, Tim. We, um, But we've moved back to the property in September 2020 yep. um, in a modular, so it's great to be back here, and now we're in the process of uh, re-establishing things again. Yep. You've, you've got a few issues, though, that you're very conscious of um, with the local environment. Can you tell me a little bit what, about what's happened with the kangaroo population since the fires? Well, initially it was uh, pretty well wiped out. We, ha we had a problem before the fires. Since the fires, they've certainly re-established um, and, yeah, probably becoming a bit of a, a problem again in terms of, um, you know, getting into our in what pasture we've got, but um, probably more importantly from community perspective, um, you know, the local farmers who are depending on their high nutrition pasture, um, they're getting into that too. So we're trying to yeah. establish something that'll keep them in check a bit um you know without causing them any personal damage as such <laughs> right let's go and have a look at what okay. we've got in the car well john here's the ute full of stuff um wow. we've got a fair bit of gear to play with yeah looking forward um, to that we've we've got some really really interesting stuff we've got our uh, our walters wire spinner we've got our stock posts end assemblies wow. we've got fence stay end assemblies we've got the white's stiff stay dog mesh okay, and it's yep. the the really tricky one with the 13 line wires right um, yeah yep. and it's got a 300 mil skirt that should help hope to keep some of the roos and the dogs out wow looking forward to that all right let's get Fire it off proof. the ute and let's get going no worries as usual guys if you like today's video please don't forget hit the subscribe button give it a thumbs up and check out more content on timthompson.ag I was really privileged on this job to work with an amazing group of volunteers from the local Blaze Aid camp at Bruthen. Camp coordinator Phil Fairing reached out to me and asked me if I could bring along some stuff for him and the guys to have a play with on their next fencing project. And I was only too keen to get involved, roll up the sleeves and have a go with this wonderful group of volunteers. Phil and I decided to have a bit of fun with the gadgets and set up a little bit of a torture test for the wire winder the implement that he was most interested in, with single runs of barb, as well as multiple runs of five plane wires that we were going to roll up all together. Now I've got all five wires connected, let's start winding and see how easy it is. It does occasionally snag on the odd knot, but if you apply a bit of extra pressure it pulls through. The fluted wire guide means even with barbed wire, really messy figure eights were pulling through super easy. This is a one-handed operation once you get going. Phil, you're one of the volunteers and one of the coordinators for Blaze Aid. That's right, and uh, we have a lot of spend a lot of time winding up wire. So if we can put a machine like this that we can wind up a whole fence in a, in a matter of minutes instead of a whole day, uh, be a great yeah. step forward for us. They are an absolutely wonderful crew to work with and we ripped through the fence in no time, the true saying, many hands make light work. Using steel end assemblies on this fence made the setup super quick and super easy. These Whites products and the Fence Stay product at the other end were really quick and easy to install and I'd recommend them for anyone starting out doing fencing. With the end assemblies now installed it was time to run out, strain up the guide wires and then run out the mesh fence. Okay John, so we've got some stiff stay for you. Yeah. Uh, White's thought, considering you want to do an exclusion fence, yep. this would be a good frame to start with. Yep. Um, so you've got um, 13 line wires Right, which yep. is pretty pretty excessive like yep, there's, there's yep. about a kilo per meter 
um, and you've got a 15 centimetre spacing between all your picket wires, so it's nice and close. It'll be dog proof. Yep. yep. And it also has a 300 mil skirt on the bottom, oh, so it's yep. got a hinge joint skirt. Yep. So as we lay it out, what's going to happen is the skirt's going to go down onto the ground. Yeah. Now give it, you know, a couple of weeks or maybe even a month or so, and that'll sort of lay itself down and bury itself into the ground. Yeah. And any digging animals like kangaroos or dogs or anything that come up to the fence and try yep. and dig under it are going to hit that barrier with their nose and more often than not that'll be enough to stop them. Yeah. I'm going to use an end knot on these so that they're nice and safe and secure. They will take extra time but it's worth putting in the work because your fence should be here for another 20 to 30 years. When you're straining up this mesh, make sure that you don't include the skirt because you want that to go flat on the ground while you're straining. So I'm setting my strainer plate up in a straight line with the picket wire so that it gets an even tension along the fence. And then I'll hammer in the wedges. Um, you're one of the volunteers out here with Blazade um, and uh, you actually you run cattle now yes um, and you've got quite a few yep um, but in a prior lifetime you're actually a newsreader I believe I was yes a journalist yeah, yeah right so you're much better at this media stuff than <laughs> I am <laughs> no not at all no. but um, you're being local and and running cattle and things like that and having your own property you've still decided to spend your time volunteering for Blazade as well can you tell me a little bit about that and why it's been so special to you? Why it's so, well, you think it's so important? Yeah, well, it's firstly, it's very emotional. Yeah, I find it after it's all over. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I suppose we've had fires close to us, but not affect us. And uh, my brother and friend uh, had done a blaze aid over in the Western District, mm -hmm. and then we had Bunyip fires, so I got involved there. And because I'm retired and um, it's just such an organisation that you're fulfilling this um, human um, need, to, I find, mm. to actually return help to people in need. And a good way to do it is blaze aid. And being yeah. uh, a country boy, born and bred in the farm, even though I went off and did journalism and corporate life and all those sorts of things, yep. the farming has always been in my blood. And mm. so to go and help farmers who have lost everything is quite rewarding and it's more than just point, fences yeah. isn't it like you're, you're helping repair more than just fences when you're working with blazer yeah well we worked at uh, bunyip and also uh here at sarsfield where we are yeah now you know, now yeah and um uh, my brother and i and, and philip were actually um looking after teams of five or six people in this different in this area and one of the, the jobs that we had to do was to go out and meet the farmers look at their situation and then of course allocate teams to go and uh, mm. fix fences, pull uh, fences down, build fences. But also the emotional side is um, quite huge, is, is that you have grown proud men mm. crying, mm. not because they want to, it's because they Just emotionally, you can see I'm getting emotional, you, mm. you, you know they need a shoulder to talk to and blaze aid with all the different types of people that we have uh, you know there's doctors and there's um there's psychologists and there's a whole wide range of people give their time mm. to come and actually help so one of the things that we do is to let them talk to us you know we're just not building fences but they're unloading on us which is really good because they're talking to us and we find that that's rewarding and we also come in with a, a laugh and a chuckle and banter and yeah. you know we, we have a good time together and, you, and it's, it's sort of like the fence is the focal point it's an opportunity to have activity again and yeah. start rebuilding you know and the farmers are out yeah. there helping us and you yeah. know they're using their tractors or they're they're getting active and as yeah. they see the days go on they see their boundary fences going up and their confidence is starting to say, Potential oh, starts to come back. Yeah, look, yeah. we're getting this together. I'm going to have a yeah. fence, boundary fence for my you know, farm again. And, and so the, 
it's great to see this um, confidence that people are starting to build and, and the community spirit coming back. And Blaze Aid helps with that by you know providing uh, the rebuilding and of fences for their farms. Yeah, so. And it's an interesting thing being being a team leader. I mean, obviously you know fencing and you know what you're doing, but you also have people with you that might be out on the land for the first time ever. Oh yes, so yeah, you've right. got that aspect as well, it is. Um, and that's a challenge for you. And we also learn, you know, like I'm still learning fencing because yeah. there's people in your teams that you have, they're actually former farmers, yeah. and, and they are very good. Yeah. You know, they've done fencing and they do it a different way. So you actually learn different techniques and, and stuff. Then you have uh, medical students coming out for the first yeah. time or a, a nurse or someone who's never done anything. Yeah. But they can yeah. uh, put a staple in and they can learn to do other things. So it is rewarding. Mm. And mm. the camaraderie at the end of the day yeah. with a meal and a, a beer or a lemonade is fantastic, you know, yeah. from a, yeah. you know, a, a team point of view. Yeah. Well, Bruce, thank you for what you do and thank you for um, talking to us a little bit about the experience of volunteering for Blaze Aid. And if you're into these sort of videos and you want to connect with your community mm. and help people and build more than just fences, Blaze Aid's a pretty good way to do it. Look, it really is. And uh, just give yourself a day. You don't have to have yeah. two, three weeks or anything. Just come out for a day. You'll be allocated a team and you'll yeah. enjoy the day and it'll be very rewarding at the end of the day that you've actually helped the community. Good on you, Bruce. Thank you so much. Thanks buddy. very much. While Bruce and I had our gas bag, Phil and the team got the rest of the fence ready and prepared, so all we had to do was tie off the ends, strain it up, and we were on to the next section, which was playing with the Pickex fence extensions. John and I then set about putting the Pickex extensions on top of the steel posts to stop the ruse from going over the top, which is always their second option. So setting up these steel posts in a step-by-step -step fashion is actually quite easy. Simply slide them onto the post. A little bit of an angle when you start the post, when you start it off really helps you to locate them. Slide them down so that the first two holes match. The top hole of the steel post matches with the bottom hole on your pickaxe. Then what you're going to be doing, of course, is tying a wire to that. So your wire clip actually ties the two posts together. Then twitch your wire on just as normal. There is no extra work to put a pickaxe on a fence. That's it. Pickaxe is now installed. And I think you'll agree, it's pretty strong. And this is a super cheap option to make your standard four foot high fence, six foot high, and keep those pesky blighters out of your good crop. With the clip X installed in under 10 minutes, we got into the job of running out the extra top wires, straining them and clipping them. And I can tell you, working with this team from Blaze Aid, that took no time at all. Well, mate, there's our exclusion fence all done. It's a beauty, Tim, it's a beauty. And I think it's, it's important for um, hobby farmers like yourself to be doing what you're doing yeah. and um, looking after others around you and not letting the roo populations build up. No, no, we want to look after the fair income farmers too because yeah. uh, their pasture is their livelihood. So, yeah, certainly every little bit helps. Yeah, right, thank and you. thanks to White's also for supplying all of the wire and the posts today yeah. and um, Pickex, obviously. Yep, yep. Um, fantastic product there by Wireman. Yep, yep. Um, so we can find out all about that on the website. So there's links to all these products on the website. John, thank you very much, mate, for thank what you're you. doing, for thanks, looking Tim. after us today. Oh, thanks for coming. It's a great fence. Yeah, it's a, I'm wrapped. Now we've got to meet a couple of other people as well because you yep. were helped out a huge amount by oh, Blaze Aid, weren't some you? Some of the Blaze Aid blokes have been amazing. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And they've, they've certainly been working away in the background of this video shoot. Have, and yeah. we've got to give credit. Where credits due they've done a great job they have the they've been fantastic here. yeah so yeah. let's go up and have a chat to them now Good on you all right so this job wasn't just myself and john uh phil uh, actually reached out to me from blaze aid a couple of weeks ago and we're having some discussion about helping volunteers um enjoy their experience with blaze aid a little bit more through video um, but in the meantime, Phil told me about your very deserving case out here, John, having lost everything in the fires. And yep. um, so it was a great opportunity to try out these fences. And Phil, can I just thank you and your lovely band of volunteers. You've had several people come through over the last couple of days. Um, fencing with a guy taking video is an interesting experience, to say the least. Uh, yes, very good. 
<laughs> he's very kind. He's very kind. He's like, I'm, I'm constantly telling you to stop, stop, <laughs> stop, yeah, a few, stop. A few takes. Yeah, a few takes. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's all been good fun. Um, guys, we really appreciate what Blazade does for the community. Um, and particularly you guys volunteering your time um, so much. I mean, you all have, you know, lots of other things in your lives, professions, various other things that you give up for weeks on end to help deserving yeah. people. So we've yeah, just got good. a few presents. I've got a few sponsors and I thought, I'll bring out some spiral fast for you to give you a hand yeah. with your next fencing job. Oh, thank you. Thank and you. some Davos fencing clips, another great sponsor of the channel. And these yeah. these are a pretty good little device, aren't oh, they? Oh, they're fantastic. You I was hoping are, we could use them, but them. We, we didn't use them today, but uh, yeah. no, I think they're, no wooden they're a huge time saver for wooden posts. So. Yeah, they've no, been good for your volunteers, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they've been good. People yeah. get the hang of them pretty quick and just use a drill instead of a hammer. Now no, that I've filled up your idea. hands, thanks mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much guys. Thanks mate. And if anyone wants to help out Blazade, um, it is as simple as getting onto your Facebook page. And yeah, or the, the website. Yeah, the website. Or the website, yeah. And if people want to give tax-free donations as well, you are a registered charity. Absolutely. And it goes to, to this you know, sort of very stuff. deserving people who yeah. have been through trauma in their lives. Absolutely. Yeah. And plenty of volunteers. And plenty of volunteers. We need plenty. We need good volunteers that watch lots of these videos and know what they're doing before they come well, out. Well, that's it. If we can train them before they turn up, that'll be even better. Yeah. Good on uh, you guys. You. As usual, guys, if you like today's video, please don't forget, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and check out more content on timthompson.ag. Yeah.